Hello, this is a very short video to discuss some of the defensive programming techniques in the cloud. Let's get started. The first technique that may be well known to you already is to make sure that we include retrial logic. And of course, we have included retrial logic when building on-premises applications as well. But retrial logic takes an important new role in the cloud because there can be transient failures that can happen in the cloud more often than uh, on-premises. So in the cloud, when we write the retrial logic, when we are using services, a number of these services come with client libraries that have retrial logic baked into them. And when we don't have that retrial logic capability available to us as part of the client SDK, then we can use third-party libraries like Poly to make sure that we implement retrial logic as part of our code to access these cloud services. Let us walk you through an example of the retrial logic. I have a very simple program here, console program called retry. And all it does really is call the Azure storage client library. It uses that library to go find a container in my storage account, and then it creates a new blob and writes this text inside that blob. Okay, that's just our simple program, but we are interested in, of course, the retry logic. The first example that we're going to run is with no retry policy, essentially. So if you were to run this program, and if storage was not available, this program would fail immediately. How do you simulate that? Well, we can do that using Fiddler, so here I have Fiddler, and Fiddler has custom rules. So what I'm going to do is, on before request, I'm going to go check for the session. If the host name matches coprgrs.blob.core.windows.net, uh, in that case, I'm going to go return 408, which is blocked. Let's just make sure we, we start capturing the traffic here, and now if if we go back to Visual Studio again, go back to Visual Studio again, you should see, if, if I run this program here, let's just go ahead and run this program. And let's just go to Fiddler and make sure we filter for just this program. Filter it for retry the executable that we are running. Right here. And let's just run this filter set now. And let's just go back to Visual Studio and now run this program. And we should get a failure. And if I look into the failure, I should see a remote server returned an error 408, which is what we expect. If we go back to, to the Fiddler logs, you see that a call was made to COPRAGRS and we returned a 408 there. Okay. Now let's just go back. Let's stop this program. Let's just, just go back. And now I'm going to remove the default retry policy. Let's just comment this out and let's just comment out the policy that we want to see in action here. In this case, we are going to have an exponential retry and it is going to try a certain number of times with a max limit of 60 seconds. And if I now run this program once again, and once again, I'm going to go make sure I filter out because I stopped the program, the process ID changed, so I need to do this again. Let's find this here. There you have it. Now let's just filter it. Go back to Visual Studio. Let's run this program. And you'll see that we are at this point hung because the program is trying to do a retry. If I go into Fiddler, you should see some more 408s. Let's just go back into the Fiddler script and let's just comment this out. 
and let's just save it. And as soon as we do that, that the next retry comes along and we can see that our program succeeded. In fact, I go to the console output, you can see that it was able to successfully stay, save this information into the blob storage. So here you can see that using the retry pattern, we are able to overcome transient failures quite easily. And that's an important part of the storage library itself. Okay, so we have seen the retry logic, but it is also important to make sure that we have tested our retry logic because oftentimes you're not able to simulate the transient exception conditions that may happen in a production setting. I'm going to look at an example of trying to simulate a transient failure. And like I said, it is hard to sometimes create transient failures. I want to show you an example of a Redis cache server. In this instance, the source code for Redis cache server is available on Windows, a C++ source code. What we did was we injected some transient failures, some random transient failures as part of the source code, so that uh, when the connections are being made, some connections can be throttled or exceptions being thrown. So I'm going to start the server right here so took the C++ source code and then injected these transient random failures in that. Let's just go ahead and run this piece of code. So we're starting the Redis cache server here. As you can see, I'll just zoom into this in a moment. So I just started a Redis cache server and you can do that too. And then injected some false and I'll point you to a link where we show you the code that we added in order to inject this failure. So while we have this server running, let me go back uh, to Visual Studio and let me show you a piece of client code, in this case, Redis client code, which is going to make a number of calls to the server that we just started. This is the server that we just started. And then going to make hundreds of calls. And then because the random failures are going to be thrown, we want to see how well our retry code does in the face of these failures. So let's just go ahead and run this application here. And this will take several seconds to complete. And it is now making a call against that server that I showed you previously. Once this operation completes, we can go and look at how many failures did our client or the exception logic did handle gracefully. And then what needs to be done in order to make sure that our code is indeed robust. Looks like the test that we ran a moment ago where we were continuously trying to make calls against the Redis cache and remember that we had a Redis cache server that had injected transient failures. And now we get to come back and see how many operations did indeed fail and why did they fail? Did we have the right retry logic baked into that or not? So if you want to try this code yourself, we have put out another blog here. Let me go ahead and show that to you. So here's the blog that we had put out earlier that talks about all of the code that are needed to inject the transient failure. Let me zoom into it, you can see. So if you go to appliedis.com and this blog right here, you can have access to all of the code that is needed to try this experiment yourself. But the key point of course here to take away is that you need to think of creative ways so that you are indeed able to test your retry logic adequately. The third and final defensive programming technique that we want to talk about as part of this first video is the circuit breaker pattern that you may already be very familiar with. And once again, this pattern is extremely important in the cloud. Let me just show you a quick blog post. Whenever a cloud outage happens, oftentimes there's a root cause analysis conducted. 
And I just randomly searched for one such outage. And you can see that the root cause, this is in 2017, October 2017, doesn't really matter uh, what originally caused this problem. It happens to be a slow running query. But on October 21st, as the author says, this was the first time a threshold where uh, the queue table was long enough. And as a result, the queue uh, reached a point where more and more items would end up and then causing the system to come to its knees and eventually cause an outage. So I just randomly picked a cloud outage and a root cause scenario, and you can see why this pattern or implementing this pattern is so critical. So let's just see this in action. And you'll remember that we have talked about a library called Poly, uh, which I talked about in the context of exception handling. Turns out that this Poly library is also good for implementing a circuit breaker pattern. So let me go back to Visual Studio. So what you see on the screen here is the Poly library. And in fact, I'm implementing the circuit breaker policy, which means that if we make a certain number of attempts and we get failures, that we are going to cause the circuit to open, which means no more calls will be possible. So in this case, this circuit breaker project is comprised of two projects here, really the server app and the client. And what I did was I went ahead and ran the server. You can see a very simple website here. And then let's just go back to our client here. And I'm going to start this again. So notice that our server is indeed running and I'm going to bring up the client. Let's just go ahead and run the circuit breaker client. And you should see that, that our client is indeed able to successfully call the service. Now let's just go back to Visual Studio and let's just stop our server temporarily. And then let's just go back to our client. And hopefully we will start seeing errors. So you can see our client failed to connect to the server once, twice, and thrice. And now that the circuit is open, no more calls are being made to the server for a certain period of time. In this case, we are waiting for two seconds or three seconds. And then once the server comes back up again and we come back up from the sleep, we are going to start making the calls again. So let me go ahead and start the server one more time here. So go back to the Visual Studio project. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and run the server. And once the server comes back up again, we should see right now our, our client, once again, the circuit is closed once again, and now we are once again able to make our calls to the server. So simple pattern like this can, can go a long way in, in causing an exception in the cloud to take place. Hope you found these tips useful. We'll come back with the part two of this video to talk about some more defensive programming techniques that are really important when working with cloud-based projects. Thank you very much.